Good morning, Web Design. This is the second video of the online version of our class. Uh, this video is going to cover the week, uh, the work for the week of March 30th. Um, we're going to cover a few things. Uh, very quickly, talk about the reading that I'd like you to do immediately as you're starting to prepare your mobile uh, and tablet designs. Uh, we're going to talk about installing the Web Developer Toolbar for those of you who have not done that yet. And then we are going to introduce you to a couple of tools uh, that will help you with your responsive design designs. I'm sorry. And uh, also uh, ensuring that your page has valid code. Uh, the validator that we're going to use is also an essential tool for helping us figure out uh, errors or problems with our page. Okay. Uh, the first uh, is the reading for uh, Monday is a short reading. Um, by Suzanne Skaka, I think it's pronounced, a reference guide for topography in the mobile web in mobile web design. Uh, this is an excellent reading for starting to think about how we are designing uh, for our phone and uh, tablet devices. Uh, often, what we think we should be doing on our phone and tablet is the opposite. <coughs> excuse me, uh, of what we should be doing. For example. The fonts need to be somewhat bigger, the letter spacing needs to be bigger, and the line spacing needs to be bigger uh, in our mobile design. We just need to be able to capture people's attention. Um, the beginning of the article is some background stuff on design, some of which we've talked about in class already. So if you feel comfortable with this, um, you can always just skip over it. It's always good to have a uh, little reminder, but you can just scroll down to her suggestions um, to heart and think about how you can implement them into your own designs. Okay, for example, the size, um, rule of thumb, font size needs to be 16 pixels in mobile websites. That's 1 EM, which is really much uh, bigger than I think some of you would, uh, at least I would have thought at the beginning uh, when I was thinking about mobile design. Um, but she talks about a variety of things. It's really great. She gives you uh, examples and deconstructs them. Uh, so really take your time going through this reading and uh, and try to implement her, her suggestions as you're going through. Okay, the link for that will be in the homework for uh, next week. Uh, the other thing I'd like you to do is I'd like you to install the Web Developer Toolbar. And there is going to be a link to that uh, in the homework for this week. This is one of the things that I asked you to install at the beginning of the semester. But if you haven't had a chance to do that yet, uh, please do that uh, now. Um, you just you have to do this while you're in Firefox Developer Edition. Edition. Uh, click Add to Firefox. You get a little pop-up menu. Click Add. And up in the right-hand corner of the screen, you will see this little uh, gear. You say, OK, I got it. Um, and when you click on it, this little pop-up will appear. And you can do a variety of different things in here. Many of you have seen me use this in our conferences. Um, and <clears throat> It's important to have. It is really a great tool to help you diagnose what's going on on your pages and to help you figure out um, what codes or what, what errors you might be having and so on. So I've just been sort of updating my page a little bit, and this is looking OK. Um, and, that, and that's great. But what if my page is looking like this? OK. This is the, ideally, this is how I want to look in, in, in my mind. Uh, but if my page is actually looking like this, I have to try to figure out why that is. Um, you'll see that the fonts are not correct, uh, even though I know I have my font code in there. The layout is wrong. It should be side by side. Uh, so things are just not working uh, for some reason. And I have to figure out what the, what the problem is. Okay. Now, we've talked about in class... Uh, a little bit about how to diagnose or checking for errors in my code. And the ones that we've been focusing on so far are really, did I save my file before I uploaded? Um, did I upload it to the right location? Those are some of the things that we've been talking about uh, in class. I'm constantly going back to the upload in the right location. Now there are other things that we need to start doing. And these are important to do. Also, did I check to save my file? Did I upload to the right location? Um, but we also need to start thinking about, okay, are there missing or incorrect semicolons, colons, 
quotation marks, brackets, you know, brackets in the HTML, brackets for your curly, curly brace brackets, hyphens in your CSS. Uh, these are also things that you can be looking for uh, in the code. Uh, one way to help you diagnose the problems is to ask this question as well. Uh, does the code validate? Uh, does, and that question means, does it, does the code apply or adhere to proper coding of HTML and CSS? Uh, because a lot of times uh, in helping you figure out whether or not a code is valid, it will point out errors in your code. Okay, so for example, in the web developer toolbar, if you click on that and you go and click on tools, you will see uh, a link. I have to bring up the right page here. Sorry, I'll do that again. I click on the I click on the and then I click on tools and I can see validate CSS or validate HTML. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on validate HTML. And I can see what it does is it goes through and it gives it a check for the URL that I've had up, had open. And I can see that there is a warning, meaning that something is not an error, but it is something that we want to make sure that is correct. And there's also an error in my page. And this, maybe this is causing some of the problems and I can go and correct it. Here, this error is saying that I have a, I'm going to blow this up so you can see it a little better. Um, the slash was not immediately followed by a closing bracket. And it highlights in the code at line 20, 23 in my HTML that there is a space that should not be there. Here, in this one at line 1, column 16, um, I need to add a language attribute to the HTML start tag to declare the language of the document. Okay. So what do we do with all this? So I'm going to start with the error because that's, that seems like an easier fix. I'm going to open up brackets and go to line 23, double check, line 23, and I will see at line 23 that I do indeed have a space right there. So I'm going to delete that space. And I'm also going to go to, back to the validator, and it says uh, in the HTML tag, I need to have a language attribute. Now, all of you should need this because I built this error into the uh, template so that you would have to add something when you're validating. So I'm just equals en. Okay, so those are the two errors that I have. I'm going to save, go to my FTP, refresh, upload portfolio 2. I'll go back here, and I'm going to rerun the validator test. And you can see, document completed, no errors or warnings to show. Great, so I know that according to my HTML, the HTML itself is correct. I can go back to my page, I can refresh, and no change. All right, so that means that I know that my, most of the errors that are causing this problem are actually in the CSS document. Now I've ruled out the HTML uh, for now. Unless there's an error in how I've structured my code and the layout, or something is missing in there, like a clear, div class clear, I know there are no errors in the code. So now I want to go and click on here again, and I want to validate my CSS. So I'm going to click Validate CSS, and I'll say, whoa, look at this. I have several mistakes. One, two, three, eight errors, it tells me how many errors that it has found uh, in the code. And these um, it looks like can cause problems. For example, a missing semicolon before a property name, um, a parse error, which means that there's probably a missing curly brace somewhere on the page. It might not be at line 60, but it's somewhere. I have another parse error. I have a vet as I have a semicolon, missing semicolon. Uh, another value error. Too many values or values are not recognized with this 2EM. I have another par font parse error. So we'll go figure out what that is. And what's nice about this is it tells us exactly where to start looking. 
548, line 60, line 67, 168, and so on and so forth. And for these, I always recommend going through one by one, fixing them the one error, going back, and then rerunning your validator because a fix of one mistake can have an effect by clearing up other errors on the page. Okay, so let's, for example, take a look at line 48 of our CSS. Okay, I scroll down to line 48, and I see border 1px solid. Okay, great. Let's see what the exact error is. Missing semicolon before the property name border. Before the property name border. So that means I need to go and look before that for a missing semicolon. Okay, before that, oh, there it is. It's missing right there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to save. And this process is a little tedious, okay? Just like a lot of things with code. I'm going to, I'll go back and click on the website itself to see if any changes are made as a result of that. It looks like the borders did show up underneath here. Okay, that's good. Those are starting to appear. I'm going to run this again. And you can see that 48 is now fixed. Great. So now I'm going to go to line 60. Line 60. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay, now this one's a little less crap. Now, if you're looking around, what we do is look on line 60. I see font family, Lord. What I notice, however, is this color is not blue or purplish blue like the other ones. So that means I should look around it a little bit, usually above. And I see that I have a colon here instead of a semicolon. So I'm going to change that, save it, refresh, upload. I'll go back to my page, see if anything's changed. Mm, well, the font is working. That's nice. The font, I only have six errors. Great. Only zero can be a unit. Okay, you must put a unit after your number. All right. So what it doesn't like is this space between the two and the PX from on the padding on line 72. So I'm going to scroll down to line 72. And lo and behold, there is that space. I'll delete it. Save. Load. Back to here my page okay that should change a few things that's good um, it didn't change any of this big layout issues but i'll refresh okay Lysing semicolon before the property name width okay and the float and we know that for before that means we sort of looked at the line above so line we go scroll down to line 168 and you'll notice that the fact that i have very clean laid out code makes this easy to see and figure out what's going on in here. If everything was a jumbled mess and everything was all disorganized, it would be very, it would be more difficult to diagnose what is going on on the page. Okay. So, so this will hopefully fix our floating uh, on our computer screen. Save, refresh, upload. Ah, look at that. That's awesome. Pop that back in place. Let's see if that helped fix anything else. Clear up any of the other errors. Hmm. So now we only have five errors. I think there were six in the last one. Great. Um, too many values or values not recognized. Again, we have this space between our number and our um, EM. So we have to go to line 177. That seems like a quicker fix right there. Here it is. Boom. Let's fix that. Save. Fresh. I always enjoy cleaning up the errors. Okay. Font, parse error, line 184. Now, parse error is one of these errors that can mean a variety of different things. Usually, what it means is that it's having trouble resolving something on your page. Earlier, we saw it was because there was a colon instead of a semicolon. There could be a missing curly brace. There could be an extra curly brace that shouldn't be there, and so on. Also, if it's missing a curly brace where it figures out there's an extra one, it can add it in um, and resolve itself. And the problem is actually well above. We'll see how this is working out on this one. Line 184. Keep scrolling down. Ah, parse error is here because there's a missing dash. Okay. Font size has a dash in it, right? Font size, font size. But I was missing mine right there. So I can save it here. Ah, the fonts did change. That's nice. Great, two errors. 
line. This is my paying parse error, and it's not really telling me anything. Now that's interesting because I do have this. This is correct, but if I look at it, I notice that this is red, and that shouldn't be red. And then I look at, and what's interesting is that it's saying line 203, but it's also saying that's the p.description. But well, p.descript is at 192. But if I look closely, I see that I'm missing the closing curly brace, right? And if I click on this curly brace, it's resolving the end of that right here at line 206, which is not where it should be resolving. It should be the rule ends right over here. So I should close that. And we should see that this curls up. This, uh, this clears up a little bit. Right there. So I can save, refresh here, and come back to the validator, level three. That's very exciting. You see, congratulations, no errors found. Okay. Now, sometimes this is slightly mistaken, and I'm going to show you why. Sometimes there can be mistakes in your code that do that actually are are incorrect things in your code, but because of how the validators work they don't catch it. So you'll see right here at line 83 there, there is an extra curly brace. And I'm thinking about well, why is there an extra curly brace right here? This is just something that I'm noticing. And it's resolving at this point, the starting of the of the phone portrait view is resolving here, which means all this extra code is being kept out of that view. So if I delete that, I have to think about okay, so where does this resolve? And now I look and I see that this is red. And it's always good to just double check these as you're checking your code, just clicking on these brackets to see if they do all turn green, which is what we want in the right way. I say, okay, well, why is this red? Well, we know that this curly brace for the media query ends right here, correct? And then we know that if it's paired properly, such as right here in the tablet view, the one at the end of this little comment that we've added should properly connect to the opening one. So the closing media query, opening media query. We see how those are connected together. In my code though, when I click on this, it's resolving to this H1. And that's not correct. And that's telling me Oh, look, I'm missing a closing curly brace right here. Now, if I click on this and scroll up, it will, it will correctly connect to that curly brace. So let me save that, fresh, upload that, go back to here, page. Now, this didn't affect the layout too much, at least on the computer view. But it could affect things if the error, that kind of error was somewhere else. So that's the that's the validator toolbar. That's the toolbar um, for I'm sorry. That's uh, validating your, your website to ensure that the code is correct. Now, if things are still not showing up the way that you want to, that means that there's a you've made some layout mistakes in coding the page. Okay, and then that just means having to go back and try to figure out what those problems are. Um, if you have gone through and validated and you think everything is working the way you know it should be and there are still problems, you know, please, of course, email me and let me know. Uh, even if you've, and if there are things in the validator that you can't figure out, please email me and let me know so I can help you with that. Diagnosing problems at this level of coding, the advanced level that we're getting to, um, takes more time and can be very frustrating. So please email me and let me know so that I can help you. Uh, I can go through, fix things very quickly, point you in the right direction. One last thing I want to show you today is the responsive design mode. And I'm sorry that this is out of the view of the tutorial right here, but under the, in the Firefox Developer Edition, in the Tools window, under Web Developer, there is the res responsive design mode right here. If you click on that, you will get a view of what uh, your page looks like on a variety of different screens. So right now, this is the um, phone, 320 width, which is what we're using, uh, portrait mode. Here is landscape mode, 
portrait mode, landscape mode. Uh, you can change to a variety of things. So here's a tablet, 768. I can look to see what it looks like on there. Tablet widescreen. You can also go through and edit the list so you can add any additional phones, screen sizes. There are a variety of laptops. Televisions are in there now. Um, so you can see what your page will look like or your site will look like at a variety of different screen sizes. Uh, this is very useful. It is often more useful than by moving the screen in and out like we've been doing in class because this gives you like a, a true representation of that. Um, and you can keep one version of your site open in a tab. So you have the main site here on the computer screen as you're working on things. And But you can also keep the, the responsive design mode open in another tab, which is really useful. Uh, and you can do this a couple different times so that you can actually have the tablet open in another tab. So you can have three versions of your site open, the computer, the phone, and the tablet, all open at the same time. So now I have the tablet open. I have my computer open here, the tablet open here. I'm sorry, the phone here and the tablet. And as I'm doing my uh, coding and making updates, I can refresh the page and it will show me exactly what's happening in the tablet. And this is a really wonderful uh, tool for helping you code the individual pages. So you don't have to slide the screen back and forth. Uh, you see everything directly in front of you. Um, I like to sort of reorder it so I have the from smallest to largest. Um, so I can see what is going on on each of those screens at the same time. Okay. So the phone, for example, as I'm looking at this, I might say, well, even though I've removed a paragraph, there's only two paragraphs here. Uh, there's three in the other screen sizes. Uh, I'm still not seeing my photography up high enough. So that means I either need to write less here. I should cut this down it's too much. I could maybe code the page so that the second and third paragraphs are not necessary. Um, but this is important to think about what you want, how you want people to view your phone screen um, and your tablet screen. So here in the tablet, people are automatically going to start to see uh, the photography, right? They'll see my phone screen, they're not. So the question is, how do I get this up a little bit higher? Uh, and these are important questions as you are thinking about what you want people to see on their phone. As always, if you have questions, please let me know. Uh, let me know well ahead of time before you get frustrated as you're coding your pages. Uh, I recommend thinking about when you're designing for your phone, when you're designing for your tablet, when you're designing for your computer, be very intentional saying, okay, I want to work on my phone font sizes right now. And then I want to work on my phone uh, positioning of the images right now. Okay. And just focus on that one thing and then say, okay, check that off the list. Now I'm going to work on my tablet font sizes. I'm going to work on my tablet layouts and so on and make a checklist for yourself, okay? I'm going to be handing out you a final checklist for the requirements for the assignment, but make a checklist. Say, this is what it needs to be worked on, and check it off when you're done, or if there's a problem with it, write down what that problem is, it is and either email me or get back to that later, then work on something else. Trying to work on all three screen sizes at the same exact time is, is a little chaotic. 